Commutify presents Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Each week, we explore the challenging issues transportation demand management professionals face on their journey to transition commuters from driving alone to more sustainable, shared and active commuting habits. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify. This is Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Hi, everyone, and welcome aboard to this week's episode of Between the Lines. Today, I'm joined by Desra Knowles. Desra is the Commuter Service Program Manager at the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Harris County, also known as Houston Metro. Uh, he's an experienced transportation demand management or TDM leader, and he's worked across multiple marketing disciplines in large and small transportation programs, as well as public and private entities as a consultant. And he was the chair of the Vanpool Council at the Association for Commuter Transportation, or ACT, uh, from 2019 to 2020. Um, and if you haven't gotten from that little piece there, uh, that means today we're going to be talking about van pools and how van pools are going to help how van pools are going to help save the planet. Um, but thanks for being on today, Desra. Thanks for having me, man. I'm, I really appreciate this opportunity. And I think this is going to be a really good conversation because you know I think people know what van pools are. Some people might not be quite as familiar, but you know, particularly coming out of the pandemic, as more people go into the office. I, I think this is a really good solution to help really get a lot of people in, um, particularly in places maybe that aren't served as well by the traditional public transit routes, things like that. So, um, but let, let's kind of start off high level for those people who don't know what a van pool is. Can you tell us like, what is a van pool? I, I like to explain a van pool as a, um, I like to explain it as a glorified carpool, really. Um, I, I like to explain to people that, you know, um, how I immediately make, connection with people as I say, you know what a carpool is, right? They're like, yeah, you know, I, I meet with my friend and we ride to work together. I said, exactly. I said, think of a van pool as the same thing. However, I tell them that we provide you the van, we provide you the vehicle. You guys meet at a central location and you travel to and from work um, with people you generally live near um, or you work close in close proximity to each other. Uh, um, and so usually when I explain it that way, um, they get it. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I could see myself doing that. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I like the idea of, hey, we provide you the van. It's like, oh, wait, well, okay, that's good. That's even better than driving my own car. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's kind of the first segue into, um, you know, cause immediately after you start talking to people about a concept or something, you know, they, it's human for us to immediately start thinking of objections, why I can't do it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, I throw that out there initially first. So that takes away that objection. Like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to use my car to do it. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you a van. And so they're like, oh, oh yeah. okay. Well that takes that one away. So uh, then we, we, we usually have several other hurdles to get over, you know, objections to get over before we can get someone actually in a van pool, but that takes away that immediate one. Yeah. I like that. Lead them off with that's a good idea. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about kind of what you all do at Houston Metro to support van pools, what you're doing on a daily basis? Um, well, it's been really interesting um, during the pandemic. You know, we started out uh, pre-pandemic. We had about 550 plus vans. Um, and, you know, that's that equals to about probably about 5,600 commuters on a daily basis. Um, and as you can imagine, during the pandemic, with everybody working from home, our numbers have have dropped, you know, significantly. As you know, most programs across the country have experienced. Mm -hmm. So, um, how our agency, you know, promotes it, um, we're we're a little set up a little bit different than probably most fan pool programs. Um, Metro is bound by, like most traditional transit agencies, bound by a service area, so they're only allowed to operate within a certain area. However, um, we receive funding uh, as a regional van pool provider. So mm -hmm. although our uh, bus operation is only in a specific service area, we are the van pool provider for eight counties that surround us. Oh, um, cool. So um, if you know anything about Texas and if you know anything about this region, um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of space. Yeah. So, you know, we have Harris County, Montgomery County, um, Fort Bend County. You know, those are some of the largest counties that are around us. And so um, that accounts for quite a few people. Um, 
that we're responsible for. So we receive the funding and then we operate the regional van pool program on behalf of all of those different transit agencies that are mixed in that in, mixed in that bunch that I mentioned. Um, so our agency, uh, we provide all of the, um, the employees that are responsible for this program. We have um, a, a brilliant uh, team of people who are doing this on a daily basis. We have some of the, the largest um, employers in the world that are based you know, here in Houston. Um, mm -hmm. we're known as the energy capital. So, you know, we have a lot, quite a, yep. as you can imagine, energy companies that are here, a lot of oil and gas. Um, but here recently that we've seen an uptick in, uh, technology and, um, you know, innovation, uh, companies that are coming on board. So, um, we'll soon be known as the innovation hub, I'm sure. But, um, so, you know, we have people who are working on a daily basis to solve, uh, the issues uh, of of commuting, you know, uh, uh, traffic, as you can imagine, traffic is uh, bad here. Um, even mm -hmm. during the pandemic, traffic was still bad. <laughs> and so uh, so it's, a, you know, we kind of have a, a ongoing mission of solving issues, solving problems, introducing people to um, the concept, um, which is not always, you know, it's not always easy um, because, you know, here in Texas, uh, we are car centric. So, you know, everyone has a car. Uh, it's everyone's life goal, you know, to, to get a car. And yeah. so usually from the onset, people are, that that's what they do. You know, I like to tell people I grew up um, and I couldn't wait to turn 16 so I could get my license and so I could get a car, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't even, no consideration given to commuting bus. You know, we, we just, we don't think about that. And so you kind of have to retool people to think about, you know, the effects that everyone having a car, you know, the effects that that's having on the environment and uh, sitting in traffic and valuing time. And, and so it's a, it's a, it's an education um, and awareness. And so we support the region um, and our transit agency, of course, supports us, but we support the region in uh, taking that message to the masses. Yeah. And I like a couple of things you pointed out there, which is this works for all different industries, oil and gas, tech, it doesn't matter. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's a solution to help even in car centric places like Houston um, and uh, frankly, a bunch of places around the U.S. and in, in the Western United States as well. I grew up uh, in Denver and the same thing, super car centric van pools can help here. Um, and even for people who are, you know, really uh, into cars, it's it's still a solution out there. Um can you tell me a little bit more about what the experience is for an actual rider of a van pool? Like what is maybe that first time uh, you get someone on a van pool, what is that experience like? And then how does that change over time? Or is, is it just like a nice consistent thing people can lean back on? Usually, you know, uh, I'm in an interesting position. Um, I'm, as you mentioned, I'm the commuter service program manager. Now, prior to this, uh, I spent uh, two and a half, three years, um, in a position where I was an account executive. So I actually had accounts and, and, and um, mm -hmm. um, clients that I was responsible for. Um, and so I've had a unique experience where I've actually had to be out there talking to people about it, you know, uh, boots on the ground, you know. Yeah. So um, as you can imagine, I've, I've, I've heard it all. I've experienced <laughs> it all, you know. And so I've heard almost every objection that people could possibly have to, to, um, to an alternative commute. And um, usually what I tell people, I set the expectation. I like to set the expectation for my clients. You know, I, I tell them that it's going to be it's going to be very different. Um, yep. You are now, you know, going to um, be in a vehicle with a bunch of other people. Some of them, you, you know, you may have worked at the same company for 10, 15 years and you still don't know each other. That's very yep. possible, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, so. You got to think about it's going to be all types of personalities. Uh, there's going to be, um, you know, some people are morning people. Some people are, you know, evening people. And um, and some people don't do people at all, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just try to set the expectation for them that, you know, you just, you know, you're going to be a neutral person in a vehicle. And, um, and I always set the expectation by telling them, make it work for you. Um, yep. you know, you know, what, you know, the reason that drove you to do it, you know, you need to save money, you know, you need to get home to your children, uh, quicker in the evening. Um, you want to start being on time for your, your son's soccer game, you know, whatever your motivation is, keep that your motivation. 
Um, and I'd like to assure them that, you know, call me back um, when you see your first savings. You know, let's call me and let's have a, let's celebrate that. Let's have a conversation about you saving your first amount of money that I assured you that you would save. Um, and so usually when you set it up to people that way, you know, they're like, OK, I know what to look for going into it. And then, you know, a year or two later, uh, when I'm back out at their company talking about Vampool at a random moment, they walk up to me and say, hey, Des, remember? I say, hey, well, how's it going? You know, how's the Vampool going? I'm like, oh, man, it's great. Um, you know, I, I, several other people, I've gotten them on board and it's just, you know, it's a great thing, you know, and usually you, you usually you make a lifelong customer and um, it usually it turns into kind of a friendship. You know, they they know you. Mm -hmm. um, I like to always tell people, you know, hey, you can call me anytime if there's any issues. Um, call me. Let's talk through them. You know, um, and and when I tell people, hey, call me and let's talk about the savings. You know, they actually take me up on that. Like, hey, Desra, I, I just realized I saved a hundred bucks. What? <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, hey, you know, send me some tips, treats, or you know, send me something. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a. I, you hit on a couple of really like really cool things about Van Pools. One is like that sense of community, not just between van poolers within the same van but maybe between vans and even between like you and the van pool uh riders i mean that's really cool uh, i think a lot of solutions out there there's it's kind of divorced the person operating it from the person who's writing it i i really like that that's that's really cool um and then you also mentioned like the longevity uh you get a lifelong customer i, I was going to ask you this later but i kind of want to ask you it now what is how long are people usually staying in van pools? It seems like, like you said, once you get someone in there and they really start to see that first, that first savings check, they're like, I'm going to stay for a while. Is that true? People are staying for a while in van pools usually. It is. Uh, we actually did um, last year, I'm going to say it's last year. We, we did an interesting, um, pulled an interesting report on uh, the longevity of people that we had in the program for a number of years. And, um, at the time, I think we had probably about 100 to 200 people who had been here 20 years. Wow. Who had been in the van pool for 20 years. Wow. Um, and so, you know, they've seen a lot come and go. And a lot of those groups um, are, are you know, still together. You know, they're still the same, you know, with a few additions here and there and you know, over the years. But generally, it's the same people, you know, and it warms my heart to hear stories about, you know, people, uh, van poolers being at, at, at um their fellow van poolers, children's weddings. Um, unfortunately, we've had we've had van poolers to be a part of, you know, someone's home going or funeral, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we, we hear all of these different stories and uh, we hear stories about van poolers who they have van pool night where all of their families get together and they go out to dinner. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just That's you awesome. hear all these stories about people who are making lifelong, you know, relationships because these are people that, you know, you see every day, you depend on each other. Um, and, and you've, you've come to know them as we like to, we like to say it's a, a van family, you know, so yep. we take van, you know, van and family and put it together. <laughs> I like that. So we like to tell people it's, it's a van family and, you know, that's really come, come, um, come into play during the pandemic, you know, cause a lot of the van pools that we were able to keep together, um, believe it or not, a lot of them were, were, um, essential workers were people working in the mm -hmm. Texas medical center. They were nurses and and administrative staff who, you know, we depended on during the pandemic to continue to come to work while all of us were sheltering in place. Um, and what some of them share with me was that, you know, hey, we realized that, you know, our van pool is, is our family and we all know what it's going to take to keep each other safe. We know the importance of, of you know, why we wear our mask or while we're, you know, washing our hands or sanitizing our van. So we know the importance of that. And we all have, it's kind of just like an unspoken, unspoken rule where we know we're going to come together. We know it's up to us to keep each other safe. Um, we know that if you're not feeling well, stay home, you know, so you don't endanger the other people on the van pool. And these are stories that I've actually heard from actual people. You know, this is not, um, you know, a story that was written. These are actual people who are telling me, hey, this is how we've kept each other safe. This is how we've stopped the spread, you know, in our area. And this is what we're doing. And this is why we're able to continue to to van pool. And this is why we'll forever um, tell the story. We'll forever be, you know, be a champion for the program. And um, it's, you know, stories like that. And it's things like that that keep us going, that keep us, you know, make us remember why we do it. 
Um, I like to brag on, on the team of people that I have around me because I like to tell people that we're passion driven. Um, you know, when so many other entities in the world are profit driven, um, it's, yep. it's, re it's refreshing when you see people who are driven by passion. You know, it's, it's our passion to try to help save the planet and, um, and try to leave a world behind for someone, you know, like someone left a world behind for us. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of just refreshing to every day to wake up and try to see what problem we can solve today. Yeah. I mean, oh man, I really, I love this idea of family. I mean, that's like sticking together, supporting each other. I mean, I, uh, not to, I mean, I, I love public transit. I just had a great episode. I, uh, you know, talking with Jerome Horn about public transit. I mean, it, it's great, but you kind of, you, you miss that. You might, you get on a bus, you might get on a bus with the same person every day and maybe there's some, you know, Hey, how are you doing? But that's kind of it. It's not like this real like family that you get with a van pool. I really like that. Uh, and I think it's so cool that it extends as well to the, to the Metro, to the Houston Metro team. It's like everyone, a part of this is, is part of the same thing, working towards the same goals, working together. Uh, that's really cool. It's it, like, Something that sets, I think, van pools apart from the rest of the solutions out there in the TDM space um, is that van really idea. I, I love that that term as well. And I, I have to give credit to um, one of one of my team members. Her name is Verly Verly Jackson Scott. That's that's her saying. She originated that. When she came up with it, we all thought she was insane. But over <laughs> time, <laughs> you know, over time, we were, we kind of like fell in love with the phrase, and we even, we got T-shirts made and. Um, oh, that's great. We had them sent out to all the customers. You know, um, I love you. You love me. We're, we're the perfect Van Mali. And so, <laughs> you know, we had t-shirts made and sent them out to all the customers. They loved oh, them. They, they, they absolutely loved the, the idea. That's great. I love that. That's, that's, that's really fun. Um, okay. So I want I'm going to give you kind of a, a three part sort of rapid fire here. We, we hit some of the, some of those big things, longevity of van pools, that van Mali aspect, and, and you've talked about cost savings, you talked about time savings. I want to just hit quickly, what is that impact from a time perspective, from a cost perspective, and maybe also from kind of an environmental perspective, air quality perspective, um, that you see as like, uh, you know, for individuals, for the region that, that your vans are helping uh, achieve? Well, uh, here in Houston, we have an expansive um, HOV uh, lane network. Um, and most most people that are on the uh, on the highways, um, they don't get to take advantage of that because, you know, in, in some cases you have to have two two plus people in the vehicle. And so, um, as you know, we have a lot of S SOVs, um, you know, on the mm -hmm. on the road. And so people are, are watching people in that HOV lane. They're zooming by, you know. And so we yeah. like to tell people that, you know, hey, you know, well, if you know, if you get in a van pool, you know, you can you can experience that. You can take advantage of that. Um, and so that's that's where the cost savings is. You know, you can imagine even if you're able to get home 20 minutes sooner than you normally would. I like to challenge people and ask them, what are you going? What would you do with an extra 20 minutes? Yeah. And, you know, the average person is like, hmm, what would I do with an extra 20 minutes? And. In the grand scheme of things, you think in 20 minutes is not a whole lot of time, but then 20 minutes is, is really a whole lot of time. You know, that's time that you could meditate. That's time that you can spend talking to your children about their day. That's time that you can spend um, um, with your spouse. You know, that's time that you can spend with your pet. Um, and so when you really challenge people to think, and that's really what this is about, is about challenging the thinking um, of how we, we, we may have been raised or reared. You know, we were all raised and reared to do things a certain type of way, but sometimes it helps to challenge that thinking. Um, and so it's just about bringing to people the, the mindset of that you can save time and then actually showing them, uh, to getting to the money savings, actually showing them how the savings comes in, um, you know, by asking, usually how I lure someone, and lure is probably the wrong word, but usually a conversation starter for me is yeah. how, do, how do you get to work? And so the, you know, the average person says, oh, uh, I drive. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Um, well, how much does that cost you? And they're like, yeah. oh. you know, and so the first thing they want to say is, oh, well, I spend about 40 bucks a week in gas. I'm like, oh, okay. So what about the wear and tear on your vehicle? And they're like, oh. <laughs> They can't quantify that, you know? Yep. And so I'm like, how much time do you spend on the freeway? And they're like, 
oh. So I'm like, it's when you start challenging them to quantify that, they're like, I got a problem. That you're right, that's a problem. You know, and I'm like, how how about how about um have you traded a vehicle in recently? And they're like, Yeah, actually I did. I I just bought a new truck. Hmm. Okay. So how much more could you have gotten for the vehicle that you traded in if it had less miles on it? And I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, I'm yeah. saying the first thing that if you're in a car dealer, and no knock to car dealers out there that, that may even be listening, but the first thing that when they give you the resale value in your car, they tell you the trade-in value, they say, well, I, I probably would have given you a little bit more, but, you know, you got quite a few miles on that vehicle. Yeah, that's so true. I just did that. Like last year, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I wish I had some some fewer miles on this thing. I could have gotten a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, you're saying, I know this car is worth more than that. You know, but yep. but if but if you challenge people to say, how much more could you have gotten for the vehicle that you know, if you had less miles on it, if you had been in a van pool, and I'm like, yeah. oh desert, oh desert, you got me. You know, um, and then you know, from an environmental standpoint, you know, recently we've we've actually, that's actually what's helped us to make headway with quite a few um, of our corporate partners. Um, we have decided to take our message directly to them um, by sending them our environmental reports, letting them know um, the cost savings that uh, employees are experiencing. We're letting them know uh, the greenhouse gases that that we're saving from the environment, vehicle miles travel. We're sending them reports with these actual numbers. Um, you know, there, there's a there's a, a famous rapper that I'll quote. Uh, his name is Little Wayne. Little yeah. Wayne says. <laughs> Little Wayne says, women lie, men lie, but numbers don't lie. And so, you know, when you send them that report, I can call you all day and say, hey, your employees are saving money to and from work. You know, they're saying, OK, yeah, that's great. But when I show you uh, over the course of two years that that's that's one point nine million dollars, you're yeah. saying, oh, I can't argue with that. Or I can't argue with the amount of um, of um greenhouse gases that are being saved from the environment or the number of cars that we're keeping off the road on a daily basis by, you know, replacing in a larger van pool, you're replacing 13 plus vehicles with one. Yeah. Um, if you tell them that, you know, you were once, once uh, in one van pool, let's just say if a, a van pool was a minivan, you had six people in it. Um, so there were six vehicles coming to your parking garage and taking up six parking spaces. Now there's only one. Yep. You know, and so when you when you put things to them like that and that it's saving them on those number of parking spaces that especially if they're in a multi lease building, you know, multiple tenant, multi tenant building um, that you're paying per parking space, that now you're paying for six, you know, five less parking spaces. How much money does that save you? And then think about if you could duplicate that, if you could get more people in a van pool, how much would that save you? Since, you know, we all know corporations care about the bottom line. And so if I can show them direct savings to their bottom line, you know, um, and then when you start HR people, you start speaking to their pain points. Uh, what about customer, you know, employee retention? You know, we've had this thing, the great resignation. You know, how many how many more people would have stayed at that job if the commute was easier, or if it was easier yeah. to get to, or if someone had taken the time to help them get to work or was interested in how they get to work or um, how stressed out they are before they even get to the job and then have to get to the job and deal with the stress that's at the job. You know, so if I'm at my breaking point when I walk in the door, it's, there's not very much that a person could can say that won't set me off, you know. <laughs> so yeah. just making, forcing them to think about those types of things and, and allowing me, um, having a person like me, and, and it's duplicated many times on my team, of people that are just like me to say, I'm not even asking you to do anything. I'm just asking you to let me help you do it. Uh, I have a team of people that that's what we're paid to do is to come in and solve the problem for you. The only thing I need from you is access. Yeah. I just need access to the employees. Let me talk to them. Let me send them a message um, or, or let, let me give you a message that you can share with them. And, um, you know, when they get an opportunity, just tell them to call me. And let's talk it over. And I'm not here to say that it's for everyone because it won't be for everyone. You know, a, a van pooling is not for everyone. We like we tell people that and they they raise eyebrows when we tell them it, it may not be for you. And that and that is OK. Um, but, you know, for the people that it's for, we want them to take advantage of it, see the benefits, reap the benefits. And, um, you know, as I stated earlier, leave this world um, better than we found it. And, you know, because leave it to the people who are the generations 
of people that will come behind us, our grandchildren, um, you know, our great grandchildren, you know, they're going to be people that are going to come after us that they're going to, they're going to, hopefully they'll thank us for what we tried to do to save it. Yeah. No, I mean, that's compelling. I mean, all like every single one of those stats you bring up, the, the time, the, the millions of dollars in costs that a, a single employers, you know, employees can save is incredible. And then obviously the emissions, fewer parking spaces. This is just, it seems like it just more and more benefits. Uh, I one wonder. Of the, one of the, um, the one of the big, one of the big ones, you know, I'll say is, um, um, is when you ask people, how much, how much would you pay for peace of mind? Mm-hmm. You, you can't put a number on, you can't put a value on that. You know, just yeah. just just to get home and and calm. You know, I didn't have to deal with. Um, we have a we have a freeway here called, um, and I live on the north end of it. It's called Interstate Forty Five, and everybody in Houston knows about Interstate Forty Five. Yep. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and I live on the north end of that. And so, if if I get in my car and I work downtown, Metro is located in downtown Houston. And if I have the audacity not to take the parking ride and I want to drive my car in, or if I have an appointment that's, you know, after work or during work that I need to get to, and I, I just, I, I, um, I have to drive. And I'm going to tell you, I dread it. It's, yep. <laughs> it's probably the worst, one of the worst feelings ever, because I know what I'm going to have to deal with, you know, I, and I, I, I can't find anybody that can get in with me and, jump on the HOV lane. So I just, I just dread having to do it. And so I just imagine how dreadful that is for the other people that are doing it as well. And if you sit, if when I'm sitting in traffic, I'm looking around me and I'm looking at all the faces and I'm looking at the people who are like this. Yeah. I've been that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so it kind of eases my burden because I'm like, I'm not the only person who's dreading this, like this, this, there's got to be a better way than this, you know? So, um, you know, I just try to take that and use that as fuel in my messaging to, to when I talk to people. I'm like, hey, I, I'm not telling you anything that um, that I read about. I'm telling you this is my life as well. You know, and so I dread having to do it. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm a parking rider. You know, I, I believe in the parking ride. You know, um, if 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 my schedule worked out to where I could ride a van pool, you know, if my schedule was fluid enough, you know, there are van pools that come from my area and go downtown that I would love to jump on, but my schedule is so wonky that it just doesn't work out for me. But I do, you know, I do my contribution. I ride the parking ride. I'm a faithful yeah. parking rider. I know my driver. I know the people who are on my bus, um, you know, so I'm faithful to that. And that, that's my contribution to the environment. Yeah, I like that. And, and it goes back to the thing, you know, van pool is not for every situation. There's other things out there for that. Van pool is a great solution for those people that could use it, might want it, right. might like it. Let's get as many people of the like of that group uh, on as possible. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Um, okay, cool. I mean, we're almost out of time here, so I want to finish off with the question we always, you know, end every episode with. Uh, you've talked about a lot of things. Uh, if you had to just, you know, summarize that down, that one key message, uh, you know, why will van pools help save the planet? Van pools will help save the planet because people are going to finally realize that it's time to save time, it's time to save money, and it's time to save our planet. Uh, and Van Pool uh, can be one of the conduits in which to do all of those things that I just mentioned. I mean, win, win, win. Hard to argue against it. <laughs> can't, can't, can't beat that with a bat. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, Desra, it's been great having you on. Um, to everyone listening or watching on YouTube, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Make sure you tune in again on our next episode, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, and if you haven't yet subscribed to our email list, you can do that at betweenthelines.io or just follow us, subscribe to our podcast, wherever you're listening to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, Google Play, Google Podcasts, uh, the like. Um, like I said, it's been great to have you on, Desra. Thank Excited you, to Dean. continue to see the Van Pool uh, program grow in Houston. Uh, next time I'm down in Houston, I love Houston, by the way, like some of the best food I've ever, I've ever had. Uh, next time I'm there, uh, I want to, I want to see some of these van pools in action. Uh, it's, Let's it's do it. Cool. Just, awesome. just call me. I'll be glad to do it. Uh, I will. All right. Thanks again. And thanks again to everyone listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. 
Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify.